So what do these planetary nebula look like? Um, they, a lot of them are round, at least the first ones that were detected, which is why they're called planetary, but they actually have nothing to do with planets. So this is just one of those names that doesn't make sense. Uh, and they are nebulae because they're big gas clouds. So here's an example um, of the star's outer layer being shed and the interior of the star is still really hot. And so it's producing radiation um, and that is ionizing the gas and causing the gas to glow. So this one is called the Eskimo Nebula. Uh, this one is called the Ring Nebula. It's the icon of our Moodle class you may have noticed. And uh, this, you can very clearly see here, it is a uh, kind of a shell of gas surrounding a bright core. And that bright core is the stellar remnant. This is, the, is on its way to becoming a white dwarf star. So the white dwarf is what the core of the star will turn into as it, as it continues to age. No more fusion will happen in the white dwarf star. Um, so it just has luminosity related to its temperature. Um, eventually that'll cool down, but it takes a really long time to do that. So there's you know, no reasonable phase to talk about after a white dwarf. Um, the, the composition of these oh, of the white dwarf is mostly helium, but it also contains carbon, oxygen, neon, and it will contain heavier elements for more massive stars. Um, the composition of the shell will tell will you know determine the colors that we see because different colors will come from different gases. Um, but also you have to be careful when you're looking at pictures of planetary nebulae to be cognizant of the wavelength range they were taken in. So for example, that cat's eye nebula that we just saw, this is how it looks in the X-ray range. So you can pick out lots of different structures here and you'll notice these different shapes um, of the planetary nebula, um, but it seems like those different shapes might actually be the same overall shape that are seen from different angles. There's a bit of complication for which shapes a planetary nebula could be because sometimes there's a binary star system. So that'll create different shapes than just a single star. Uh, but in general, it seems like what we have with planetary nebulae is two, um, I guess, streamers of gas that point away from the star in two directions, um, and then a ring of gas that sort of surrounds their middle. And so sometimes if we look directly down the streamers, we only see the ring. And if we're looking side on, like this one, for example, the butterfly nebula, then we see the sort of two um, side to side streamers. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed looking at all these planetary nebula. I could look at these all day. Okay, so eventually this gas doesn't last forever. It's being you know, expelled away from the star. It's leaving the vicinity of the star. Eventually this gas is just gonna rejoin the interstellar medium and it will no longer glow because it's not close enough to its hot source. Um, and so the planetary nebula phase doesn't last for very long in the grand scheme of things, uh, but the white dwarf stays behind for basically ever. So that concluded our story of the low mass stars. And now we're gonna move into the high mass stars. So here's the evolutionary path of the low mass star. And there's a few differences, key differences for the high mass stars. First of all, the high mass star does not experience a helium flash because instead of, um, instead of the helium burnt, um, building up in the core, it just keeps on, there's enough gravity to keep on pressing it to higher and higher temperatures and pressures. So it can go fluidly directly into helium burning without um, having to go through any giant phases first. So there's no helium burning. And that also means that there is no giant branch because that's the giant branch was ascended because of that hydrogen shell burning. Um, and so if we don't have to go through that, then we go directly to helium burning. And so there's no giant branch. So because there's no giant branch, the evolution of high mass stars mostly just loops around in a horizontal way on the HR diagram. Um, so first, our, um, the hydrogen shell begins to burn as fuel runs low in the core, and this increases the temperature of the star at a constant luminosity. Eventually helium will ignite. It continues to build in temperature, but not increase too much in luminosity. Um, eventually we reach kind of a turnaround point where the star is as a low temperature as it's going to get for now. 
And so my question for you is what kind of star do you suppose this is at this stage on the diagram? <laughs> 